Welcome back to Solo Adventures! My name is Livy, and I'm here yet again with another BGG Solitaire PNP contest review. So today the game we're going to be looking at is Terraphobia. It's a quick, short little card game where you attempt to be the most effective person to frighten children. So as usual, if you're not interested in actually watching me play this game, you can feel free to skip to the end to hear my final thoughts. Otherwise, let's crack into it. So with this game, you just have to shuffle the deck to get set up. And a round goes like this. You draw two cards. I pick one and give one to my opponent. Draw another two. Flip over only one and take one and give it to the opponent. Then we flip over both. I pick one and opponent gets one. And we flip over just one, and I'll take this one, and the opponent will get that one. So let's see what the final score is for this round. We group the monsters according to colors to help us with the scoring. So the scoring is extremely easy. We just add up the values of each of these monsters here. You get an additional two points for every group of two matching monsters and you would get um, three extra points for every group of three matching monsters and so on. So the opponent has um, 22 and I have 29, so that means I win. Uh, so now he needs to calculate his stamina so I can see how many reputation points I get from this. So this is worth four points because of the number in the balloon and then the children with bunny rabbits also get an additional point. So four, six, two, one, one. That's a total of 14 stamina. So I take my scare point or whatever this main number is, which is 29, and I subtract 14. And that is a difference of 15 points. So I currently have 15 points. Now each player shuffles up their individual deck. And you draw one card at random, and that will be additional stamina you have next turn. So that is a lot. You get one extra stamina for each candy there. We take the rest of the cards and we shuffle them back in. So that was how one round works. A, ga a game consists of four rounds. So now we shuffle up again, and draw two cards, and I of course want the one that's higher. And I'll take that one. Let's find the final score. opponent has 24 and I have 26, so I get points again. Um, but this time he gets to add these for his stamina. So he has a stam stamina of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. So I only get one point. And we shuffle up again. Uh, high stamina again for next round. That was round two. I will take the six and the seven and the eight and the six. opponent gets 24 points, and I get 
27. So I win. And so we get to um, see what the difference is now. So he has a stamina of 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. And that gives me four points. And we shuffle up again. This time we each get to keep two cards for stamina. I'll take the seven. Oh, I wasn't supposed to look at that. I'll just shuffle again. I'll take the five. The eight. And the seven. We'll score. So the opponent has the opponent has 25 points and I have 27. So I win this round again and then we can figure out how many uh, how much stamina he has. 6, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. So he has so much stamina, I can't damage him. But in the end, my grand to total is 20, and that's 20 versus 0. So I am the winner. So that was Terraphobia. Um, how was the game? Let's talk about it. All right, so that was Terraphobia. Um, what are my thoughts about this game? As usual, we're going to start by talking about the build. And the build for this game is very easy. There are only 18 main cards in this game. And that should be pretty short and simple for you to make. There's an optional expansion that I didn't get into, um, and that's a few more cards. But all in all, this is a little card game with not very many cards. One criticism about these cards is that there really isn't any bleed area. So you see the little bits of white kind of peeking out on the edges. Um, and that goes for the fronts and the backs. I, I think it would have been a little bit nicer if there was a bit of a larger bleed area. And that is because the artwork on these cards is cool. I think it's cute. I, I like the colors. I like the little cartoony monsters and little cartoony children and uh, it, it, it's cool. I like it. The art style's fun um, and I, I like the colors. I like the overall design. There's nothing wrong with that there. So yeah, I like how it looks, but how does it play? Well, Terraphobia is definitely an easy game to get into. Um, and there is a variant for playing this game with two people. And I think that maybe when this game was first designed, it was made for two players in mind. Because in my opinion, the solo mode um, is pretty broken. Uh, I honestly don't really know how you could lose at this game. I, I've played this game probably five or six times and I have never come close to losing. I always win by a landslide. And in my mind there are just no choices to make in this game because everything is about probability. So since you get to pick your opponent's card, um, of course you're always going to pick the card for yourself that is most likely to be the highest. So if the exposed card is 5 or higher, then you take that one. If the exposed card is 4 or lower, you give it to your opponent. And so for me, there are no choices in this game. I already know what the most advantageous uh, card to pick is from a, a probability perspective. And so these games are about as engaging for me as flipping a coin. I can't speak about the game's two-player mode, maybe it's better, maybe, you know, I do feel like this game was probably made with two players in mind, 
Um, but I am not reviewing that. I am looking at this purely from a solo experience. And as it is, the, the gameplay is ridiculously unbalanced. In order to lose at this game, you would have to be ridiculously unlucky. And seeing as how there are four rounds, even if you got really unlucky for one round, you're gonna get lucky for the other three. The scoring is very simple, the mechanics are very simple, it doesn't really feel like you have any choice in this game, and it is essentially random. This is a card game version of Candyland, in my opinion, in terms of depth. Um, the outcome of the game is decided as soon as you shuffle. So yeah, I guess I don't really have much more to say about this game. Um, cute, fun art style, I like the illustrations. Um, one thing that I think is a bit weird is that the pink bunnies are worth one additional stamina point, and you add that to the value on the balloon. But, like, why can't you just make this balloon worth two instead of one? Like, why did you have to add in the extra bunny rule? So yeah, Terraphobia. Very cute game, very cute artwork. Not particularly fun or engaging. Of course, if the art style or even the gameplay looks interesting to you, you can feel free to try it out, especially if you want to try it with two players. But as for me, it just doesn't keep my interest. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe, and if you like, you can check out my Patreon. You can also check out the Facebook group for solo adventurers. So until next time, friends, stay adventurous.